Hello and welcome to the 44th video in this beginning C programming series. It's been a while since the last video because I got rather obsessed with trying to finish the um, JavaScript chess engine and GUI series, which I'd recommend having a look at. Hopefully you might find it interesting. And back to this series, remember the last video we were create, we created and in fact I think I might have it open in a console window somewhere next to me. I can just drag over now. Yes, I have. So you remember that we created this racing car structure, we printed our structure and we allowed the user to add and remove, uh, sorry, just add cars, not remove, add a car and keep going crucially until the list reached the maximum size defined by max cars in our array. And we said in the last video, this isn't really the best way of doing things because we always have to have a finite limit to how many the user can add and define, predefine our array. And that ends up wasting memory. So in a memory pressure situation, it's not very good because you might be defining a massive array of car objects when you really don't need them all. So we want some more flexibility. And the way you get this flexibility is using something called a linked list. And I said at the end of the last video, the I think this structure is always something that I think is presented really, really complicatedly. And it isn't complicated. And in fact, the, the first time I came across a linked list in a book, after taking a while to understand what the hell the book was going on about, I realized that in one of my games for the iPad, which involves, funnily enough, cars, uh, racing cars, I realized I'd actually implemented um, a linked list, or what's called a doubly linked list in that case, without ever knowing that the, the concept of linked list existed. I was just doing it because I needed that functionality, because it makes things very, very easy to, to chain things together. So hopefully this will be a very simple explanation. So in the case of racing cars, let's imagine we have cars racing around a track and we have a leading car and let's say this car is called uh, car one. So the car in position one is called car one. Now the next car behind it will be the car in position two, so car two. And the next car behind that is the car in position three and then car in position four and so on. Uh, you could view these as cars all stored in an array or you could view these as just um, cars somewhere in the memory. But we need to be able to link these cars together so that they're in sort of a chain. And it's actually very easy. If you ask car one, what is the next car behind you? The answer to him will be, next is car two. And if you ask car two, what's the next car behind you? Then he's going to say the next, obviously, is car three. And I'm sure you can guess that if you ask car three, what is the next car behind you? He's going to say car four. And now if we ask car four, what's the next car behind you? He's going to say there's nothing, but not nothing as in zero. He's going to say nothing as in empty. There isn't anything behind me, which means the next is null in terms of C. And null means simply empty. Doesn't mean zero. It's a different kind of thing. So if we look at this concept here, this is already a complete linked list. If we wanted to print the whole sequence of cars on the track, we would just simply say, we'll print car one, and then we'll ask what car one's next car is, and print that. And that car will ask, what's your next car? And then print that one. And then for that car and so on, until we say, if your next car is null, then we'll just stop printing because there are no more cars to print. So the way we do this in the structure is exactly by what I've got here. We just maintain a pointer. This is where pointers start to become very useful to the next car. And all we'll do is, is we'll set this pointer when a car is created to null. And then it will be assigned when there is a next car to point to that next car in the list. So to reiterate, the next pointer will be pointing to car two for car one, to car three for car two, to car four for car three, and car fours will just stay as no. So let's see us actually making that in the main function here. And I've just realized I need to actually add a struct space S racing car like this in here. And now let's make some racing cars. Now I've already prepared, well, the syntax for doing it with the pointer, I'll just drop one in now because I've already prepared some to speed things up a little bit, is if I create a Red Bull, I've got the Red Bull name, 100 for speed, and crucially here, I've set its next pointer to null. And I'm just going to drop in some more cars now, like so. 
So I've got Ferrari, Mercedes, Lotus, McLaren, 90, 80, 70, 60 for the speed and the names. At the moment, these aren't linked together in any way because their pointers for their next cars are null. So now what we can do is, is we can actually link these together. So what we'll say is, we'll say the Red Bulls next is going to point at the address of the Ferrari. And now what we can say is that the Ferraris dot next, and I'm sure you get the idea here, is going to point at the address of the Mercedes. And I'm just going to do some copying here. And now the Mercedes dot next is going to point at the address of the Lotus. And the Lotus dot next is going to point at the address of the McLaren. So that means we have Red Bull first, next we have the Ferrari, next we have the Mercedes, next we have the Lotus, next we have the McLaren, and the McLaren, his next, we doesn't have anything behind him, so he's just going to be set to null, his pointer. And that's our completed linked list already. And now that all remains is actually to, actually I'm very quickly off screen from you, you guys going to just quickly compile this, make sure there are no errors, there aren't. And now what we want to do is actually just be able to print this list, a full list of cars to the screen. And crucially what we need is we need first of all the starting object of our list. So we'll call this start. And then let's also make a current car that we're pointing to. And obviously right at the start that'll be pointing to the start. And let's make a count integer to keep track of how many cars we've printed out and set that to zero. And now what we can do is make a while loop and we can say that whilst our current car so what we're pointing to is not equal to null, so it's not empty, it's not pointing at anything. And crucially here, make sure you don't put a star here. Because here we're asking if what this is pointing at is null. Well, we want to know whether it's point the pointer is pointing at is 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 at anything. So if it has an address or not. So if it's null then it doesn't. So if it is pointing at something, then we can use the code similar to the last video. So we've got the car. We've got the name with the string holder and we've got the speed here like so. The other thing, sorry, we need to do very quickly obviously is increment the count because we've printed a car. And then at the end of this I'll put on a new line and just count. And now we can take our current car and this should be familiar from the previous video name and we'll take the current car speed as well. I'll just put this on a different line so it's a bit more condensed for the screen size, like so. So that will print whatever car we sent in on the list as first. So if we send the Red Bull in first, that will print the Red Bull. But now we want to be able to print the next car on the list. And it should be fairly clear how we're going to do that. We're going to take our current car pointer which remember in the case of the first object is pointing to the Red Bull. Well, we, we're going to take our current car pointer and now we're going to say that, set that pointing to our current car's pointer but the next. So in the case of sending in the Red Bull, well its next is looking at the Ferrari. So once we've printed the Red Bull we'll be setting current car to look at the Ferrari. That'll then print the Ferrari and we'll set current car equal to the Ferrari's next, which will then be the Mercedes and so on, until we've printed the McLaren. And the McLaren's next is null, which means current car will become null and therefore will break out of the while loop. So we can print for the end then total cars and then a D and just a count in this way, which will then give us the just put a new line on the end there, the total number of cars on our list. So I'll just compile this off screen very quickly to see how many errors I've made because for some reason in preparation for that I kept making errors. None. Okay, so now the only thing remaining to do is go down to main is actually call this print list function. And we'll call it with uh, Red Bull. And we should see then to the screen, oh, I didn't want that should see, and I need to send the address of the Red Bull because it's a pointer printing then to the screen. I'll just compile. I'll just bring the terminal across here now and go to run chapter 44. Just remember if you're on Windows and you don't need the point and the forward slash. And now you can see it's printed the Red Bull, the Ferrari, the Mercedes, the Lotus, the McLaren and the five cars. 
If, for instance, instead of printing at the Red Bull, we start printing at the Mercedes, then what will happen is, when we come to print list, our start will be the Mercedes. So we'll print the Mercedes, and then we'll get the next car on the list, which will be the Lotus. So we'll only print the Mercedes, Lotus, and McLaren then. So if I just save this change here and bring this back across and recompile, and now run again, you can see we now print the Mercedes, the Lotus, and the McLaren because we're telling the program where to start printing off the list here. And that's it, that's all there is to the way that a linked list works. Now the next thing we need to do obviously, we're still entering things here by actually hard coding in the code and what we need to do now is be able to change our program to allow the user to add cars as much as he or she wants to our list and then print our list out. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next video. So I hope that made some sense. Like I said, I think linked lists are a lot less complicated than most um, instructional documents make out, and hopefully that's fairly simple to understand. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.